Even a mammoth of a movie like Avengers Endgame has some footage that was filmed but never saw the light of day. It's hard to believe that a film with a 181 minute runtime has anything else to give us, but rest assured that there are probably another three hours and then some of recorded scenes that were left on the cutting room floor. The following 10 films inspired by comics all have alternative endings out there somewhere, but good luck if you ever want to track them down. Some were changed because they didn't match the overall tone of the movie, some disappeared because they would have tipped the film over into a new age rating, and some were left out because of very real-world events. They all share one trait though, no matter how badly you want to see them, the chances are that your wish will never come true. What a bunch of teasers we are. So with that in mind, I'm Ellie with What Culture, here with 10 comic book movie endings you can no longer see. Number 10. A Bat Callback in Batman Forever Tim Burton's Batman movies have not aged as well as you think they have. Still, at the same time, they were revolutionary. Nobody had thought to present the caped crusader in this way, laying the groundwork for Christopher Nolan to completely reinvent the character once again with his trilogy. As for the Batman films in between Burton and Nolan, well, 1995's Batman Forever, which Burton produced but did not direct, was a step backwards towards the more cartoony superhero films of the 1960s. Jim Carrey as the Riddler, anyone? No? Mm, didn't think so. The film is a complete departure from what came before it, which is strange when you think that it almost ended with an homage to Burton's work. A scene was filmed showing Val Kilmer's Batman and Chris O'Donnell's Robin staring up at the bat signal a la Michael Keaton's Bruce Wayne at the end of the original Batman film. Would this have changed the overall perception of what was a middling Batman film? No, but it would have been kind of cool. Number 9. The Twin Towers in Men in Black 2 the original Men in Black movie was loosely based on a comic book series called The Men in Black. That series changed ownership a bunch of times before eventually ending up in the hands of Marvel. The second Men in Black movie ends with the good guys launching an alien princess back into space via a giant UFO and then neuralising the entirety of New York City with the Statue of Liberty. It definitely makes more sense once you've seen it. The film almost made use of another famous New York landmark, although one with a much darker history than Lady Liberty. The film's ending was originally set against the backdrop of the Twin Towers, but the events of 9-11 understandably changed that. Men in Black 2 was actually still filming when the towers fell, and production was suspended whilst America dealt with the tragedy. Again, this probably didn't change things too much in the grand scheme of things, but it's weird to think that this film is linked to one of the biggest disasters of the 21st century. Number 8. Ash's Curse in The Crow City of Angels Sticking with tragedy, let's move on to The Crow, a film more famous for its backstory than its plot. Actor Brandon Lee was shot and killed on the set of the movie after a prop gun was incorrectly loaded. The accident sent shockwaves around the industry and has tainted the film ever since. This is why when a sequel to The Crow was announced, people were a little bit sceptical. Still, Hollywood got a Hollywood and The Crow's City of Angels was made. Vincent Perez took on the titular superhero man playing a resurrected version of Ash Corvin. The film ends with the vigilante mourning the loss of his new love interest before heading off into the afterlife to be reunited with her and his son. The original ending, as conceived by director Tim Pope, saw Ash cursed to walk the earth forever, never to see his lover or his son ever again. This proved too bleak for the studio, who forced Pope to change it to a more hopeful one. More hopeful? The guy still dies at the end of it. Number 7. The Clones Attack in Judge Dredd The original movie's plot revolves around Dredd's evil half-brother Rico and the army of clones he plans to use to take over Mega City 1. Brothers, what are they like? In the theatrical cut of the movie, the clones are shown waking up and that's it. They just sort of wither away and die, taking Rico's lab with them. It's a bit of an anti-climax, really. This might be because scenes were originally filmed of Dredd blasting his way through the clones in a goo-filled rampage. However, Big Sly wanted the film to be more family-friendly, and so the violent sequence was cut. Um, he wanted a Judge Dredd film to be more family-friendly. Had he even read the comic books? The guy's name is literally Dredd. Number 6. Jane Waits in Thor after bonding with Natalie Portman's Jane Foster, Chris Hemsworth's Thor is heartbroken when he has to sever the connection between his world and hers. 
unbeknownst to him, Jane waits for Thor on Earth. In fact, she almost did a whole lot more waiting. In a deleted ending, Jane and her colleagues Darcy and Dr Eric Selvig devise a beacon to attract Thor's attention. There's also a mention of Sword from Selvig, a branch of S.H.I.E.L.D. that wouldn't make its official MCU debut until WandaVision. If this scene had been included, it might have made audiences care just that little bit more about Thor and Jane's relationship. Still, considering Natalie Portman vanishes between Thor 2 and Thor 4, maybe it wasn't worth it. And no, the archival footage from Endgame does not count. Number 5. Peter's Grandfather in Guardians of the Galaxy Now, there are plenty of unanswered questions in the MCU. Another query surrounds Peter Quill and his extended family. We see a big group of them gathered around Quill's mother's bedside right at the start of Guardians of the Galaxy, presumably to take Peter in after his mother passes away. We all know that never happens. Instead, the young boy runs away, gets abducted by Ravagers, and becomes one of the universe's greatest heroes. But what about his family? What became of them? That question was nearly answered in the film's ending, according to director James Gunn. The man behind The Guardians explained that the film's original ending would have seen Peter's grandfather still waiting for him back on Earth. This was removed, however, as Gunn believed this ending would be too freaking sad. Well, yeah, of course it would. You really wanted to go straight from Ain't No Mountain High Enough right into an old man waiting for his kidnapped grandson? Number 4. Jean Grey vs The Skrulls in Dark Phoenix The hopefully final non-MCU X-Men movie was the disastrous Dark Phoenix from 2019. The film was a mess, badly paced, poorly written, and with characters flatter than a tortilla wrap, it also lost Fox a boatload of money, making it a flop in every sense of the word. Maybe things would have been different had the original ending been left in. The initial villains of Dark Phoenix were supposed to be new members of the Hellfire Club, led by Emma Frost. And no, before you ask, that does not mean this would have been a crossover with Stranger Things. That then changed to the Skrulls, who were the misunderstood villains of Captain Marvel, and they were then dropped in favour of the Dabari, another alien race from the Marvel back catalogue. According to Cyclops actor Ty Sheridan, scenes were filmed involving the Skrulls, including a huge fight scene in New York. However, possibly to avoid comparisons with other superhero films, that was scrapped. And what do we get instead? An underwhelming ending to an underwhelming movie. Number 3. Slattery Explodes in Iron Man 3 It's safe to say that long-time Iron Man fans were less than thrilled when legendary villain The Mandarin was revealed to be nothing more than a dingy British actor in Iron Man 3. The fact that the Mandarin, one of Iron Man's greatest ever foes, was reduced to a punchline upset a lot of people. They probably would have killed Slattery if they had the chance. Well, their wish almost came true. An unused ending would have seen Slattery accidentally inject himself with the extremist virus that gives Killian his powers in the movie. Except in this case, Trev doesn't get fantastical strength or the ability to breathe fire, he blows up. Slattery wasn't the best character in the world, but did he really deserve this? Number 2. Rogue Doesn't Take the Cure in X-Men The Last Stand The third instalment in the original X-Men film trilogy, The Last Stand tries and fails to mush together about four different huge storylines from the comics. The Dark Phoenix Saga, the X-Men vs the Brotherhood of Mutants, Xavier's death, it's all here and it's all lost in the shuffle of a bogged down bloated movie. Another story that somehow found its way into the mix was the invention of a cure for mutation. This appeals particularly to Rogue, whose energy draining powers prevent her from establishing any sort of physical relationship. In the actual ending to the film, it's revealed that Rogue took the cure to be with her boyfriend Iceman. The misogynistic undertones of a woman sacrificing something unique about her to be with a man are plain to see and could easily have been avoided. A scene was filmed where Rogue returned to the mansion with her powers still intact. This would have been a much more powerful ending, showing the young woman controlling her mutation rather than the other way round. Number 1. Quicksilver Lives in Avengers Age of Ultron One of the biggest swerves in MCU history came at the end of Avengers Age of Ultron. Everyone and their dogs thought Jeremy Renner's Hawkeye was going to die. They'd spent the entire film trying to make him interesting, even giving him a secret family to really crank up that sadness factor when he eventually snuffed it. And yet he didn't. Instead, Aaron Taylor Johnson's Quicksilver got axed instead, actually sacrificing himself to save Hawkeye. What a waste of time that was. 
Director Joss Whedon actually shot a version of the film's final battle where Quicksilver did not die, just in case Marvel didn't like his idea of killing him off. There also exists out there footage of him joining the Avengers in the final scene, fully suited and booted. However, none of this footage was ever used as Whedon got his way. Yet another example of Joss Whedon ruining somebody's life. And that concludes our list. If you think we missed anything, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there. And I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day and I'll see you real soon.